and we are live on tonight's episode of traditional homemaker live q a we are going to dive into what library resources are available for families homeschool preschool public school private school or toddler what resources are available to you to help your child or grandchild to be successful this school year. So I'm excited to introduce you to my friend and my librarian, Edith Helbert. But before I bring her on, if we're just meeting, I'm Denise Jordan, and I teach traditional homemaking for today's homemaker. So if that sounds like something you want to do, then click that subscribe button and double tap that little bell icon so you don't miss any upcoming content. And oh, let me not forget to say that tonight's sponsor is our very own Apron Boutique, Apron Diva. Pretty and practical, we believe that an apron is a homemaker's best accessory. And just for tonight, we have a 10, this is our featured apron, the Morgie, and it is 10% off if you use the code Morgie. And that code is, let me put it up here again, Morgie 10. So if you use the code Morgie 10 in the uh, checkout, you'll get 10% off and you can see it hanging back there on the door. It is so cute. It says at the top, dogs are a girl's best friend. And then at the bottom, you've got all those little dogs. So let me just bring it up a little closer to show it to you again. And then we will jump into things. So, so there it is, dogs are a girl's best friend. And look at all those cute little puppy dogs. Aren't they adorable? So, let's go ahead and we will bring on Edith. Hi, Denise. Hello. How are you? I am really well tonight. How are you? I am good. I am so glad to have you on. I really am. I'm just really glad to have you on. And for all of you ladies that have jumped on so far, I want you to know that this is my personal librarian. She's the branch manager at the library that I attend. And so I'm really glad that she is there. And I wanted to get the opportunity to introduce her to all of you. So ladies, say hello to Edith. Welcome her to the platform, please. And then while you guys are doing that, I see Leanne is on. Hey, Leanne. Hey, Angela. Hey, Patricia. Rachel Knight's always good to see you. And of course, Khadija at her healthy home. Mary Cleveland is here. Uh, Khadija's here. Leanne, Rachel Knight, Patricia, and Angela so far. So good. So thank you guys so much for jumping on. I appreciate it. Hi, Patricia. <laughs> And Leanne, oh, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna be good at this. <laughs> Looking at the comments okay. at the same time, I'm gonna leave that to you. That's okay. You don't have to say <laughs> me right now. So we've got Wendy who's saying hello, Edith from mm -hmm. Washington State. Wow. So that's pretty good. And I'm not sure, Patricia, are you from New York? I do believe. Is that where you're from? No, no where's Patricia? Right there from New York. And then we've got Kathleen Fincher on, and Edith, you may know her. She's one of our community um, ladies that lives right here, not too well, far from the library. And she's certainly been in and out of there quite a few times. So she probably jumped on because she saw that you were going to be here tonight. So wow. it's good to have um, her jump on with us as well. Also, Patricia is in Washington, D.C. Okay. Something on my tongue. I need to find something to cover my thermostat because the sun is shining right on it and okay. it's going to crank up my AC. Hang on. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, um, so as we continue to invite guests to the platform, 
one of the things that I'm trying to do is to find people who can bring something to every facet related to homemaking. And just to make it plain as to why we're talking about library resources tonight, um, parents are the first teachers. If you think about it, like way back in the day when schools weren't readily available, when books weren't very easy to get, they were very expensive. There might have only been one or two books in a house or none. And so the parents taught kids how to read and write and cipher, as they used to call it. And then we begin to have like more organized schools and that kind of thing. But even today, particularly with the COVID, the pandemic and all that was going on, parents really were holding it down, helping the kids to kind of learn uh, outside of school because they had to help the kids learn virtually or whatever. So parents are still doing that. And now, of course, it is back to school time. And I know what you want to do is think about what can I do to help my child be successful at school? this year, especially since they've been out a little bit, there might be a little bit of delay. So Edith, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I have been looking forward to this all week. I, I'm really happy to be here. Um, I have been, you. I think you know this, but I've been following your channel for a while. Oh. Um, and <laughs> since back in the day when you had the makeup aisle. Um, <laughs> so I'm really flattered that you asked me to be on. So. Okay, well, you know, like she just pointed out, she's known me for a while. So one of the things that I always say is that I believe that the most valuable card in my wallet next to my health insurance card is my library card because it opens up so many doors for me and my family. So Edith, what do you say to that? Well, I I, I want to back up for a second and just say that that, that whole phrase about parents are the first teachers is something that we really um, hammer on. We, we really talk about early literacy a lot and how when you're playing with your baby, when you're with your infant and you're, you're talking and you're singing and you're writing, well, you're not writing with a baby, but you're pointing out letters and you're play. And when you play together, those things are building language skills and getting a child ready to read. So okay. just from the, like, like it's, it's so true that nobody spends more time with the child than than the parents hopefully <laughs> and and the brain development from from birth to like a year is so they're just little sponges soaking it all up so okay the more you talk with your child the more you read with your child your baby um and and so one of the things that librarians do a lot and and it's kind of the gold standard for for um early literacy is is we we teach parents in their story times about how how to help build those skills and how to do more of the stuff they're already doing because well, so often. I like that. Now let's back <laughs> in. I want a little bit more about that. I wasn't planning okay. to talk about that quite this way. Okay, sorry. But no, but no, when no, you no. say parents are the okay. five first teachers, that gets talk me excited. About that because I think that's <laughs> important about building those literacy language skills. So just go ahead and dive into that a little bit right now. Cause I was just like, boom, I like it already. You want me to go, go for it? Yeah. So, so talk, read, write, sing, and play. Those are the five, those are the five things that parents are doing with their children anyway, but those are the things that build those, those, those vocabulary, like the, the language gap between a, a child where nobody really talks too much or all the, interactions are no don't do that um and and a child who typically is in a more affluent household maybe with you know more time to spend with one-on-one -on -one and and more of those skills the, the language gap can be three million words by kindergarten oh, wow. um and so um is it three or 30? It's lots, lots of words. <laughs> I'm not a children's librarian, okay. um, but but I'm really passionate about making sure that the kids in our community have those resources, um, okay. you know. So, I, so yeah. I put it up on the screen and I had, there's a typo there, but talk, read, write, sing, and play. So, okay, that's important mm -hmm. to kind of keep in mind that that's kind of some things that's gonna be going on there. Okay, so now it's back to school time. 
Yeah. Let's start with what's available for public school and private school for grade school or elementary school as it used to be known. Mm -hmm. And then you can even tack on high school and middle school and high school in there as well. But let's start with elementary school first. Okay. What do I have here? Um, I've got this whole list of things. Okay. So we have story times and we have other programs at the library. Obviously we have books. Mm -hmm. um, everybody knows the library has books. <laughs> um, and what people don't know is that your librarian can put together collections. So are we, we're talking about public, like people who go out of the house for school right now, right? Right, right now they're going to the public school. They could be going to a private school. Yep. Yeah. So, so, um, Sometimes there's assignments that need extra help um, and the parent may not know how to do that. But we have we have tutoring resources. Many libraries do. Our library subscribes to tutor.com, um, which is a website that that we pay for access for all the card holders in in our How many libraries have that resource tutor.com um, it is it is a it is not uncommon, but it is kind of pricey. We had to. We had to, you know, write a justification and get get um, uh, access to it, and then and then we have to make sure that the community uses it. So part of our job is marketing it and making sure people know that we have it um, through our library system. It's available, I think, eight hours a day. I think it's available from. I should have the flyer in front of me, but I don't. Um, but it's available from um, noon to 10 p.m. I do have it on a piece of paper here. From noon to 10 p.m. every day. So especially if you're like in, in middle school algebra or something like that and you haven't, I haven't looked at that in years, um, you can connect one-on-one -on -one with a live tutor. So that's really, that's really a cool thing. Um, we have a virtual library. So rather than looking up things on um the inner on on the internet and just going wildly to google and finding things we have curated resources um what does that mean what does curated resources mean it, it means it means things that that we know are scholarly or and are aimed at the right age level mm -hmm. these are these are databases that um, typically you can access with your library card. Some of them you have to come into the library to use because of the because of the um, licensing requirements from the from the content owners. Mm -hmm. But some of the things that we have are, are um, Gale resources, which is they used to publish. Um, do you remember opposing viewpoints and and um, issues in context that mm -hmm. those were Gale publications and rather than publishing a new book every three years, like they used to do, um, they, they now sell us access to their data online. Um, and, and that I've never worked in a library that didn't have some Gale resources. So then um, if you've got a child that is in middle school or pub, in high school and they're mm -hmm. working on research projects or if they have mm -hmm. to write a composition or different things like that, mm -hmm. the library has resources that can support them either virtually or the library can put together a collection of books that they can check out to help them work mm -hmm. on that particular project. And then when we go younger, um, the recommendation is that children read at least 20 minutes every single day. Um, either on their own or with someone. Mm -hmm. So, so um, we can help librarians can help kids figure out what books they might be interested in. Mm -hmm. um, Storybooks, of course, but then there's like high interest nonfiction, which really appeals, especially to, to elementary boys that, that, that don't like to read or are mm -hmm. reluctant readers, we call them. Um, then we'll have, we'll have things um, for them. We have, an app that is wide, widely used in most libraries now called Beanstack. And we use it to track our, um, our summer reading program, but you can also use it to track, to, to time yourself while you're reading so you can keep track and then, and then enter your page numbers so you can see how many pages you've read or how many, how many books you've read. And that's one word there, Denise, Beanstack. Oh, Beanstack. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then it has challenges too, like ways to play with um, with language or with science or engage with your community. Um, 
So I'm going to have to pause just for a moment. Hang on. My back door just opened. Okay. So as uh, she pauses for a second, I want you guys to hear that the tutor.com, if your library doesn't have that, you can put in a request possibly and ask them to try to get that resource in for you. So what are you ladies thinking so far about what are some of the resources that you can that's available to help your child. She's really talked quite a bit about what's available for preschool as far as, you know, being uh, sing, write, laugh, play, that kind of thing. So what are your thoughts so far? Let me hear from you. You guys are kind of quiet tonight. But I, I did like the thought when she said 20 minutes a day that your child should read. So either they're reading themselves, they're reading with you, or you're reading to them and they're sitting beside you um, looking at the pictures while you read. So that's definitely going to help their language skills. And what do you think about the uh, amount of words that kids can learn by kindergarten? I just thought, wow, kids can know almost 3 million words by kindergarten. So what are your thoughts on that? Okay. So there's that. Um, and you guys are quiet tonight. No comments. All right. The other thing that oh, no, that's okay. I understand, you know, you've got a family and there's some things that you've got to do. Hey, Cal, <clears throat> it's good to have you on. We've got Edith Helbert, uh, a librarian who is on tonight, and she's telling us about what's available uh, to uh, support your children and grandchildren uh, from a community perspective. So, okay. So, Edith, um, my child struggles with math, reading, or language arts. How can the library help me with that? Um, <laughs> so we can help connect you with resources. We, we know lots of resources within the community. Um, we can provide space for them to meet with a tutor. Some libraries have tutors. Mm -hmm. um, we can help identify um, book, reading math and something else I remember. Where is that question? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, but, but, there are, there are, um, finish your thought and then we'll look at the question. Yeah. Sorry. I got distracted. Um, we can put together, we have some, we have books that supplement curriculum. We, at our library, we don't collect curriculum books, although some libraries do make that choice, mm -hmm. but, but we have lots of things that can go along with the curriculum, um, extra resources. And then, yeah. Uh, librarians are librarians are there ready to help you, ready to look things up, dig around and find the answers. OK, well, Patricia said she has grandchildren in high school. Do you have a recommendation for reading? Yeah, whatever they want to read. Um, <laughs> but um, I am really excited about um, I don't know. For I love reading teen books, mm -hmm. um, books, mm -hmm. young adult literature. Um, fiction especially. Um, so I have lots of recommendations, but I hate to just give one because I don't know your grandchildren and, and lots of people read lots of different things. So my recommendation would be find out what they've read recently that they liked and then ask what, what's sort of like that or f dig in a little bit into what they liked about it. Was it was it the story? Was it the um, characters? Was it a fast paced kind of a thing? Action? Um, was it dark and moody? And that's the style they like. So so just anything for anybody in high school is is a little. And when you ask that information, then you can go to the librarian and say, this is what they like. This is what they just read. And then they can pull some things that are similar mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. OK, there was another comment, too. And I think this is a good one. And Leanne says she had no idea that the library offers so many resources. And one of the things you put on your notes is that the library was the best kept secret. Yeah. Well, and in fact, things about the best kept secret. Oh, I, I just noticed something in my notes that I wanted to make sure and say while we're still talking about figuring out reading for young, younger kids, elementary school, mm -hmm. is a lot of schools subscribe to these tests where they do AR or they do Lexile levels for leveled reading mm -hmm. so, that, so that they know kids are reading 
stuff that they'll have success reading. Mm -hmm. um, and we have in our, at least in our library system, we have it in our catalog so that you can, you can learn to search the catalog for those, for those levels. Um, but, but that's, that's a pretty new thing. Um, and not every library system has that, but we have access to the websites where they would have that. What's it called again? There's two. There's AR, which stands for Accelerated Reader, and then there's Lexile. Accelerated Reader. And what's the other one? Lexile. L-E-X-I-L-E. -E. Okay. okay. So I'm going to put that up there. And then um, hopefully I spelled it right. Okay, there you we did. Go. It looks Accelerated perfect. Reader, and then Lexile. So you can go to your library and check with your local library about these kind of readers. Right. And and if your child's school subscribes to one or the one of these, it's usually not both. It's either Accelerated Reader or Lexile. The child will know their level because their teacher will have said. Um, I want you to read something between 2.6 and 3.8 or whatever. Mm -hmm. okay. That would be an AR number. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, okay. so and that's then the, good to know. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. So let's see. Um, so Kathleen says she likes the idea of librarians putting together packs to help the children. So something that we have is custom collections and and we started we've done them for a long time, but we called them teacher collections. And when the pandemic hit, we said, why aren't we doing this for everybody? Mm -hmm. um, so we have it on our website now and you can you can have a custom collection made with five to twenty five and you choose them in five and and and, and you say books books or other materials like you can do videos and stuff too um or you can do a mixture of things and and say hey this is this is what i um this is the topic we need can can you put together some books on this and and we can do that and then and then we even still have curbside pickup too so if somebody's concerned about coming into the library this is something we wanted to add it before covid started but once the pandemic hit, we were like, all right, now we get to do this. <laughs> so when we talk about curbside pickup, ladies and gentlemen, it's just like when you go to Kroger and you order your groceries and you drive mm -hmm. up and you bring them out. So for curbside pickup, you can call ahead or you can go online. You can order the books that you want. And then when you drive up, you can get them picked up. And many libraries may have this resource now because of the pandemic. So check mm -hmm. at your local library. And one of the things that I've learned is that if your library doesn't have a resource, if you ask, they might be able to get it. Now, they yeah. may have to jump through a few hoops to get it, but, you know, they don't know you want it or need it unless you ask. Exactly. And if you can get several people that don't know each other or that, you know, that, that the librarians don't know, know each other and start start talking, start talking about it at different branches, mm -hmm. then it'll get on the radar quicker, too. OK. <laughs> All right. So, um. Kathleen says Googling things can be overwhelming. So I think working with the librarian is a lot easier way to do it. You've got another welcome from Southern California. And then Patricia thanks you for the guidance on that. And looky here, I got a super chat. Thank you so much for the oh. super chat. I appreciate it. You don't have children yet, but you plan to homeschool. Well, we're going to be talking about that in just a minute. But thank you for that super chat. I get it. So Wendy says their library subscribes to Hoopla and she loves it. Yeah, Hoopla is really great. Um, is Hoopla is a resource um, that has audiobooks and ebooks, and um, I believe they have uh, movies and music. I think our library only subscribes to the music, not the movies, but I might be wrong about that. They might have just added that. But basically, you use your library card and you get a certain number of checkouts per month. My mom's library in Virginia gets three a month. We get 10 a month because we're better funded here in Indiana than they are in Virginia. Virginia does not fund its libraries well, um, <laughs> comparatively. We have the best library state in, in the nation. I heard that our library system was second only to the Mormons library. That well, that's true? true for our genealogy department oh, okay. being the largest. But we have been in the, I've been here 21 years 
And we have been at least a few times in that time um, within the top five to 10 in the nation. For, for We fund our yeah. libraries very well. We're getting yeah. a couple of questions, Edith, and I think I'm going to go to those rather than just yeah. go down my list because I think that'll serve them better that way. So Blah says, thank you for supporting libraries and hosts. Oh, well, you are quite welcome. <laughs> but yeah, Edith, thank you for doing that. And then Wendy says, TV, movies, books, and comic books. So that's on Hoopla as well? That's on Hoopla, yeah. And in fact, Hoopla's comic book reader is is amazing. And their comics collection. So so if you subscribe to Hoopla, you basically subscribe to everything that they have. Mm -hmm. um, they're funding. I could go on about this, but I won't. But their their funding is is different. So so there are two um, ebook, audiobook readers, or like like databases that 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 our library subscribes to. Yours and mine, Denise. Um, and and one is Hoopla, and the other is Libby, which is oh, yeah. Overdrive is the company, yeah. and Libby is the app. With Libby, the library buys each copy of the title and and we pay for each thing that's in it. Um, and then people might check it out or might not. When when 30 people have checked it out, we have to buy another copy or it might be a different number than that, but it was 30 for a while. Okay. Um, with Hoopla, if they have it in there, if they have the licensing rights to it, Anybody, any library in the country that subscribes to Hoopla has access to that, but they pay when they pay and the content owner gets paid when somebody downloads it. So it's a really interesting way and it gets into digital rights and all this kind of stuff that I kind of geek out about. But, okay. Um, <laughs> well, we got a question about homeschooling. This is their first year on homeschooling and that's something that's really big right now. It really started. Well, they, we've been homeschooling for a while, but then with the pandemic, it was kind of like like Zoom. It things just kind of exploded, and right. many people are still making the decision to homeschool. And then right now, with the kerfuffle about whether or not to wear a mask and all of that, there's still a lot of discussion about that. So, how can we help support the homeschool parent? Let's talk yeah. about that. Yeah, and especially now when when we don't know what's happening this fall, we don't know whether there's going to be in person or not. Um, many libraries have programs to go. Um, I brought one of ours. This is a this is an all ages program called Cardboard Circuits. Mm -hmm. And what's in here is a piece of cardboard, some paper clips and I don't know if you can see that paper clips and brads and little okay. metal things. Some LED lights. Whoops. My child has already used this one. <laughs> Some LED lights and a battery with um, little wires. So the and oh, and an instruction sheet mm -hmm. that tells you what you need and what what you have. And so what you need with this is a pencil or something to poke holes in the cardboard and then they make us it teaches them to make a simple circuit and to play with lighting it up and figuring out how to light up two different lights on it and stuff like that and we have these on all kinds of topics there's but we we typically try to incorporate some steam um that's science technology engineering arts and math um wait a minute I gotta, I gotta write that in there oops sorry <laughs> s-c-e-a-m right science technology, engineering, arts, and math. So then if you're homeschooling your child and you need to work on some different pieces, that one little kit fits quite a few of those. It, yeah, yeah, it does. And and we have different, I mean, a lot of them are pretty crafty. Um, there was one my child did last week that had, like weird this weird puffy clay in it and and told them to make a monster to put in their closet i don't know i didn't read that one but but it can be imaginative and and the thing that they made was really interesting so um so so because libraries aren't really able to do much programming kids can't be vaccinated yet um 
we're not sure about social distancing. There are some libraries that are doing some, and we're we're hopefully going to pilot some things this fall, but we're we're a little nervous about it, right? So so these these um, these to go programs have been really fun. So if um, I'm going to homeschool, then and then what? And and I've already purchased some curriculum, or mm -hmm. I can get curriculum from some libraries, not our library, but some right. libraries will hold the curriculum. But I can get some things. Let's say I have to do a second grader and a fourth grader. Yeah. Kind of so in your curriculum, a lot of the curricula that I've seen other that families have have book lists in them. And a lot of times we'll have some of the books. And, and even if we don't have the exact books that are listed in the curriculum, we'll have something similar on the same time. Some of the curricula are a little dated. So so we might not have the older books. We might have something newer on the same topic. Um, particularly science, things go out of date pretty quickly. Um, let's see. Uh, English, language arts. Well, I mean, books, right? Well, that's cool. yeah. I mean, we, we do have lots of nonfiction books on all, all kinds of topics. And, and, and while we don't have necessarily a workbook that a kid can work through, we'll have things that help explain the concepts, break them down if there's something that, that a child's having particular trouble in. Mm -hmm. We can put our hands on on things, on resources that can help. Okay. And like, then you like your librarian is your best resource, right? right? Go to your librarian, tell them what you need, give them a little bit of time. Don't expect it like this because we don't know everything. <laughs> We just know where to find it <laughs> or at I've least where got, to look for it. <laughs> I've got a, a magnet on my refrigerator that I got from the library. I know what it says. says if you the absolutely purple. have to know, ask a librarian. So I like what you said about that. So let's just say, and so I've got this fourth grader that I'm going to be doing homeschooling and I've already purchased my curriculum, but I like when you said it earlier, I could come over there and I could ask you to curate a collection of reading books and math books and support items for fourth grade and just have all those at home at my house and I can have them checked out for three weeks. Right. Right. And if nobody else is looking for them, you can renew them. Okay. So ladies yeah. and gents, remember that. Hey, hard hustle mom. This lady has, I believe, six children. She just had a new oh, wow. baby. And uh, I'm not, are you homeschooling, um, Candace? I can't remember that or not. That's her name, Candace. But let me know about that. Okay. So um, I think, what about enrichment activity too? So now we've got uh, preschoolers or we've got a mom that has a daycare. So she's mm -hmm. sitting for other children, but she wants to add some enrichment in her home to the children there as well as her own. So what are some suggestions you have for them? Well, one thing that lots and lots and lots of libraries are doing right now is online virtual um, story times. Mm -hmm. Some of them are recorded. Some of them are um, live. One of our most popular ones right now is our bedtime story time, which is really, really sweet. It's once a week. Mm -hmm. And it's just a quiet, kids come in their pajamas oh, to sit in front of the computer, to sit in front of their computer because it's virtual. See, we oh, used to try to have it at the library. We used to try to have it at the library, but it's too hard to get your kids in your pajamas, mm -hmm. take them to the library, have a story time, then put them back in the car and take them home and go to bed. Yeah. But with this, with this quiet little wind down kind of story time, it, I think it's at 7 or 7.30 on, I'm going to say it's on Monday nights, but I don't quote okay. me on that. Okay. Um, they just, it's just a very, very sweet little thing. Okay. So we got a question here. Let's get another super chat. Oh my goodness. Thank you again. So here's a question, Eve. So when working through a packet or curriculum, can your child just take the test at the end or do worksheets need to be submitted? How does all this work? I think it depends on state laws, honestly. Um, I know in Indiana, no testing is required. Um, in the state of Indiana, if all you have to do to homeschool your child is make sure that you take attendance and they're in school, in school 180 days. That is the only requirement. You do not have to have graduated high school yourself. 
you do not have to have any credentials. Um, when I was in Virginia, I believe it was a little stricter. There were tests that you had to take through the state. I, I would say just check with somebody. Um, you probably have a local homeschooling group. Mm -hmm. If you don't know who that is, check with the library because they probably know. Mm -hmm. um, and um, find out from, from other experienced homeschool moms. If you're not connected with that community or if you don't like that community, because I know there's different kinds of homeschoolers and some of them don't always, uh, you know, some of them are a little wacko or whatever <laughs> in different ways from each other. Um, then, then, and I'm not calling anybody a wacko. I'm just, I, I, I'm sorry <laughs> that that came out, that came out in a way that I did not intend for it to. Um, some of them are a little different and they just don't play yeah. well together. Exactly. So there's, there's a, there's a huge, um, and longstanding um, Christian homeschooling tradition. And then there's also this free spirit unschooling tradition. And the two of them have some overlap, mm -hmm. but sometimes people are very strong in one facet or the other and they don't. So that's where I was trying to go with that. Not call anybody a wacko. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to give you this example from one of my friends and the ladies of these, they, they will know her. One of my, my friend, Mary from Mary's Nest, when she first moved to Texas, she's from New York, and then she moved to Texas, and um, her son uh, had some issues with, uh, I think, ADD, and she was talking to someone on the phone. They, they recommended her to call someone, and um, she was going to need to homeschool her child, and they told her, they gave her some information and told her something, and she said, what, you mean where, you mean I have to go there where they're carrying all kind of guns and stuff? And the lady said, where are you from? And she said, New York, and she said, that explains it. So, you know, the funny thing yeah. is if you move from one area to another or you're in different circles. What is natural to the culture may be a little bit different. But I just thought right. that was so funny. And she laughs about it now. And she's been in Texas long enough that she's a very big part of the Texas culture. But when she first moved there, she kind of looked a little scant at what was different compared to where she was from. So. So, yeah, that mm -hmm. is something to think about. Um, yeah. But but what I was saying was, if you don't if you don't like your very close homeschooling, you know, if, if you don't fit in that community, you can probably find somebody in the state. Um, even even the even the less populated states probably have more than one homeschooling group that you can you can connect with your tribe. You can find your people okay. and figure out what those laws are. But it, they probably are specific to your state. Well, uh, Khadija has a, a, a point right here, too, about testing being needed in older grades and at a diploma. She's in mm -hmm. Tennessee. Mm hmm. So as you said, things do have to have to change. I was thinking back though to your nighttime, to your virtual bedtime. Oh yeah. Morning. I think that just sounds so sweet. I remember when my I was looking at the library, and I would check out um, like albums like Peter and the Wolf or oh, yeah. like that, and then I would play that for him at night when he'd go to sleep. If I wasn't reading to him, I'd put that on and he'd go to sleep. Or uh, when my grandchildren, when I first got grandchildren, I would come to the library and they'd have these little kids with puppets and alligator puppets and stuff. Yeah. They don't have those anymore, I don't think. But I would check those out every time they came came to visit. No, we don't have those anymore. I remember those. Those were the ones with um, the, the letters, right? So we had a kit for each letter of the alphabet. And then the A had an al alligator in it. And it, you right. opened so it, mouth and it had the A in it. And they would play with yeah. those over here. So the I think you were the only person that checked those out, Denise. They did not circulate well. <laughs> well, my grandkids loved them. Okay. Well, listen, let me pause for a second. You guys, if you have any questions for Edith, put them in the chat. And then I'm going to pause for a second because we have something new that I wanted to do. Now, let me back up and get my notes because I wanted to... Um, Share something that um, we do. So as you guys know, I have my online apron boutique, Apron Diva. And one of the things that we include in every order is an apron note. And this is what the note looks like. That's the front and this is the back. And then we have about 14 different notes and each one is different. And on the back, it says, the purpose of the apron notes are to remind each of you homemakers how special you really are. And each of you homemakers are very special. You do so much to support your families. And sometimes you're not always appreciated. 
So the apron note is meant to help to serve as a message of encouragement so that you know that you are. We also want you to remember that homemaking is an art and a science and you don't have to be married to be a homemaker. So this apron note today says a clutter free home can create a peaceful heart. Now, each of the notes is meant to speak specifically to someone. And I know there's someone out there that needs that message that a clean and clutter-free home can create a peaceful heart. And Edith, since you're our guest on the show tonight, you get to have this apron note. And then Mickey Blue Skies, who is my admin, just randomly picked a name from the chat and you will get this apron note as well. So I'm going to I need you to put your um, email address. I mean, send me your um, address. And the person who won that, in addition to Ida, is, let me see, Patricia Onokoya. Oh. So Patricia, well, where is it? There you go. Patricia Onokoya is the winner. So Patricia, send me your uh, address via email. Don't put it in the chat. <laughs> Send it to me by email. And then um, you'll get your apron note. So isn't that kind of cool? So there's Linda and she says the apron notes are encouraging and the packaging is so beautiful. It's a gift in itself. Oh, Linda, you must have received your apron. Oh, I'm so glad you got it and that you liked it. Okay, Edith, now you we are really getting ahead here. Listen, look at this. Edith, do you use a paper planner? How do you keep yourself organized? That's coming up in another show, but go ahead. Um, I am not very organized, but I um, I do use a paper planner a little bit, but mostly I use an online, I use um, Microsoft Outlook, which is part of my suite of stuff I have at work. And I it integrates with the other people at work. And then I have a separate calendar within my Outlook that I put personal appointments on so that I can drag. I have about 14 calendars within my calendar thing and I can toggle them on and off. So I could share that if you want to see, it looks like I can share a screen. Do yeah. you want me to do that? I'm sure. Cause if all you right. have all these calendars, you're probably. Uh, yeah. So let's them. see. It's Oh, it's easiest with two monitors. Well, let me just try it. You have to click yeah. share screen. I click share screen and then I'm going to look for, uh, I'm going to do my entire screen and we'll see if that works. And Oh, it's not letting me. Okay. It, 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 it doesn't let me, but, but, um, I would be happy to, um, share, but Wendy, I'm not good at planning. I'm, I, I keep myself organized by, by, um, stressing out at every deadline and and thinking that I'm constantly being afraid that I'm going to forget something and, you know, trying not to burst into tears. <laughs> okay. I'm trying to get this lady on to talk to us about how to use your planner. First oh, I'll be sure to watch that. Yeah. First of all, Kimmy, uh, Kimmy uh, from She's in Her Apron is coming on in, I think it's September, and she's just launched a new planner, and she's going to talk about how she's using that for homemaking. I'll put the dates up so that you guys know when she's coming on, but I'm also trying to get um, At Home with Kita on. This woman is amazing. She does so much with her planner, and I thought, my ladies need to hear this, but I haven't been able to, to hear back from her yet, though, so we'll see. Mm -hmm. But I do have Kimmy from She's in Her Apron scheduled with her new planner. So that's happening. We do know that. And then, uh, Khadija, you're getting a note from Tammy that's saying she's watched you teach your children. So you're going to be a great homeschool mom. So there's that. She's got two cute little baby dolls, Khadija does. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, so, so wait, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Got homeschool you. stuff. Can I get back on homeschool? Yes, we better I, get I just looked at my notes. Rabbit hole. Get back on task. I just I just looked at my notes and I realized I have written down private quiet rooms and public learning spaces. So the library has space. Most libraries, at least at least not. I can't speak to anybody else being open or closed during COVID because that's but our library is currently open. People can walk in. People can reserve spaces. Our meeting rooms are at 
at social distance capacity, but our study rooms, because they're really only big enough for four to six people are available for. So, so if your house, like the, you just burned breakfast and you're, you need to get out of the house because you need to teach these kids something. You can probably reserve a room at your public library and have some space away from other distractions in the house to teach them what you need to teach them. Also during normal times, we, or the before times I like to call it, um, <laughs> we had homeschool collaboratives who would use our larger meeting room spaces um, to have uh, like, like there'd be one mom that would teach math to six kids, or we'd have an art teacher that the collaborative had, had hired to come um, teach a, a group of homeschoolers. So, so space is, is a thing that we offer. Um, and we have public learning spaces. So we, we have um, interactives, puppets you talked about, um, dress up clothes, um, rugs with bright colors on them. So that, and, and, and at, at our library, I really, really want to get some outdoor play space because we have all that land out there um, with, with bird houses and pollinator gardens and little educational yeah. pieces about it. Um, I was at a library in Kentucky, in Winchester, Kentucky, um, a few, a month ago. And <clears throat> Outside the library, they have these, uh, they they have pages from books set into these frames that open and close, and you can walk through the park and read the book together, and it has little activities to do at different pages. We've done that with temporary things that that you can set up um, outside, but 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 we don't have anything permanent like that, and it's really okay. cool. So um, I'm gonna after you answer Michelle's question, I want you to just hit your list and just kind of make sure you're getting everything because yeah, I can I don't want to miss anything because you're getting I mean you are dropping knowledge today. So if okay. you ladies have questions, drop them in the chat and Edith will get to them. And um I'm gonna just let her go, but go ahead and answer uh, Michelle here. Oh yeah, well Michelle's making a comment. The library might be a good a good option instead of going to the park to homeschool. Yeah, libraries are great. Museums are great, um, but libraries are free. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, which I guess I didn't point that out, but but I mean, the American public library system is unique in the world. Most places, if you want to be part of the library, you have to pay to be part of it. And we do pay for our libraries. We do pay through our taxes. That's how libraries are supported. Um, but then it's free. <laughs> so, yeah. And it's generally property taxes. So um, it's important to know that because, because, um, because there are a lot of um, people that really, that really don't want to pay property taxes, don't think they should have to pay property taxes. And that's not a conversation we're going to have about politics, but, but, to me, it's really important to have these shared resources within a community. Okay. So. One quick question too is let's say I'm going, I'm I'm this parent that wants to go back to school or I'm going back mm. to school. I'm starting college. I'm a mature woman now. My kids are gone. It's my time. Yeah. I'm going back to college and maybe it's virtual uh, or maybe I'm going in person. How can you support me? Because I saw something called you to me on your list. And oh, list. yeah. So what is that? It's. It's a resource that um, it's a it's another one of these paid databases um, that the library subscribes to, you know, and it's called U D E M Y Udemy or Udemy. I don't even know how you're supposed to say it, but I went on there and took some. Oh, so about a year and a half ago, my um, assistant manager retired, and I hired um, a new assistant manager who is a lovely person, but she was fresh out of library school and she had not been a manager yet. And so um, we went on, I'm going to call it Udemy. I don't know how you're supposed to say it. So we went on Udemy and, and found some courses. I found some courses on mentoring and how to be a good mentor. She found some courses on managing and how to learn to be a better manager and, and what the role was so that we could have that additional, um, 
development of our professional, you know, life so that we could have a healthy relationship, professional working relationship. Um, and it was really, it was really great. And um, there's also been, <laughs> there's my child running through the bottom of the screen. Um, you're all right. Um, the, uh, they, it has guitar lessons. It has Spanish lessons. It has um, Microsoft courses. If you want to be a good, lynda.com is a good one too. And I think it's L Y N D A actually. Oh, okay. We used to have that one. We were not able to afford it anymore. Um, it was very expensive and it wasn't getting used a whole lot. Um, so we replaced it with Udemy. Um, but it has some very similar things. Yeah, that's how you spell it, lynda.com. Um, and, and if your library doesn't have these particular resources, they probably have another subscription to something that teaches adult education classes. Ours has budgeting. I had, I had a teenager that was staying with me um, take budgeting workshops on there um, for very beginner um, and learning to manage money. Um, I have taken guitar lessons on there. <laughs> so it's a wide variety of things. I think you need to address this one. Oh, that's okay. Rachel. Rachel says, I've been meaning to check out the library about a mile from my home. I walk or jog by it weekly, but my toddler is loud as all be. Well, you know what? Toddlers are loud. And what learning looks like in a library is sometimes loud. And... I can't well, speak to you. Libraries work. Yeah, well, we try to balance, right? We try to have quiet spaces, mm -hmm. but we also have active learning spaces. Um, and sometimes that's loud. Story time is not a quiet endeavor. At my library, we don't have a separate story time room. If you're there during story time, you might not be able to concentrate on the computers. And I'm sorry, but it's only an hour once a week. Computers. I forgot to talk about that, but before oh, yeah. you that, um, I, I think I, I just wanted to point out though that that on your notes you had something about that you want the people to come and actively use the library and enjoy it, and so that they don't have to like just be there and be quiet. Did I say that? You I mean, I do. Yeah. Oh, here, yeah, yeah. Librarians don't want you to sit around. Yeah, we just want to help people. We're we're here, we're in it because we like people, and we're in it because we we like to help people get access to what they need. Mm -hmm. um, our library's mission is lifelong learning and discovery, but long before that was the mission statement of our library, I knew that I was in libraries because I wanted I wanted to be able to help people find the things that they wanted to find, that they were interested in. I wanted to help people find out about stuff that they didn't, nobody told them you have to go do this. That's why I'm not in an academic library, um, in a college or university where the professor told them to go to the library and get this book. I want, I want people to want things and us to be able to help give them those things. Okay, so. I, I like that. Um, so to, I think this is something that we address here as well. So why don't you talk about that? Yeah. So so libraries are paid for by taxes and and sometimes you can't get everything at them. So and that sounds like a hard a hard situation. Soul star belly dancer mm -hmm. seven. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, it, it might be a library that you're not able to go inside of because of COVID, or maybe they're not having programs right now. Our library system here in our county is just for people who pay taxes within our county. And that's that's property taxes because you own or property taxes because you rent a place that somebody owns or you own property here, even if you live outside of the county. So those are the only ways that you can have a free library card in our county. Um, you can pay $80 a year if you live um, outside of a county, if you live in a place that's not served by any library. But our state also has a, a program called Plaque. Indiana has the Public Library Access Card. So you can go to your um, library 
pay $50. I think it's, no, it's 65 now. It used to be $50. I think it's $65, but it's set by the state library. So I can't swear that that's what it is in 2021. Um, and you pay that library for a plat card and then you um, can take that to our library and get a card within our system. Unfortunately, because of the way um, licensing agreements with, with our databases are, often you can't use our databases outside of, or, or like in your home, if you have a plat card or a subscription card, um, just because we, we are not allowed to give access unless it's to our own residents. So there's lots of little laws about it, but yeah. Um, oh, now my mom's, my mom in Virginia can use her county and all of the neighboring counties because they have reciprocal borrowing agreements. Um, so, but, and Wendy said they can use yeah. city library and county as well. So let's hit on computers. So we have most library, I don't, I don't think there's any libraries in the country anymore that don't have at least a few computers for the, that the public can come in and use um, for often for set periods of time. And then um, when uh, uh, this is another thing we added during the pandemic, although it's on hiatus right now because it's a Verizon program. Um, we rented, we, we bought hotspots and we loan those out. We have 30 for the county, so it's not very many. It's and you like check them out for a week at a time. That, they're like about this big and they can. Yeah, they're a little smaller than that. I think they're, they're more like about, yeah. but yeah, then you can connect some devices to them. Um, they recalled them for some reason and we haven't been able to get it back, but um, they're, they, they tell us they're coming, <laughs> they're coming back. Um, and that was a really popular service. Um, people have technology, but they don't necessarily always have Wi-Fi um, or or access. Okay. And then Patricia's talking about summer programs. Ten students in the library while social distancing, wearing masks. Oh, that's great. Um, we were not able to have. Um, well, we could have people come into the library, but we weren't able to do. Um, any programs inside. What we had at our library was was a lot of outdoor guided programs with staff and then some in, uh, inside self-directed programs. So people could come in and we had we had a giant sticker wall where you could um, they uh, it's called stick together. I think stick it together or something like that. Stick together. Stick together. Um, and it's 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 a giant poster and it has little squares with with letters in it. Mm -hmm. And then it's like sticker by color. I mean, sticker by sticker by letter. And you have different colors that, and a key. So it's teaching some dexterity for the little ones and 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 matching patterns. It's pretty cool. Um, so we had those up on the window. We had um, paper chains where you would write gratitudes and then add it to the community chain. Um, lots, lots of um, fun, fun stuff. Um, Ander will the Udemy is good and 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 also for commuter programming. There are some free resources for children that I just remembered. <clears throat> Google has something called Grasshopper that you can download to a phone and learn to code. And then code.org has a lot of classes that are aimed at elementary to middle school. Um, so I don't know if you're looking for adult computer programming classes. Mm -hmm. If so, then you're in the right place. But for kids, you can find some free stuff, too. That's pretty good. Now, the one thing I want to mention real quick, too, because I just happened to look on the notes and that my Kindle is like right here. And I know you're getting close to your time. So my Kindle was right here, but I'm trying to reduce the amount of books that I purchase from my Kindle, you know, like that audible was starting to add up. So I'm trying to reduce that. So what can I do to, how can you support me with that? I mean, I got my hardcover books and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. but I also like my, well, that's where you want to go to Libby and Hoopla. And, and, and I'm not sure if Kindle, there was one of them that doesn't work with Kindle. And I don't remember which one it is. I always have to look these up. Mm -hmm. But if if your device connects to the Internet, 
um, you can definitely, you can, if your device connects to the internet, you can, you can read in a browser from our website. Denise. And I can show you how, if you want to bring it to the library, we oh, can oh, I know how. Fact, I read it. I have a, I have an intern right now and three days a week, she's available from noon to three to sit down with you and your technology um, with masks on in a study room and, and um, help you use your device better. So each ordinary moment, I don't know your name, honey. I'm sorry, but each ordinary moment, she says they pay for their library, but it's only $20 a year. That's not bad at all. Yeah. So, okay, well, listen, um, let me just say while, I, while, I, while I'm thinking about it, because you know I can forget uh -huh. stuff, is that, um, is that I am running a poll to select a new name for this show. Right now I call it Traditional Homemakers Live Q&A. But I'm running a poll. It's on my community tabs. I want everybody to go over there and vote for what they think the um, what, what they might like for the new name to be. So be sure and do that. And uh, Patricia, don't forget to email me your um, address so I can mail you your apron note. And Edith, I got to get you your April your apron note as well. But Edith, let's do the lightning round. Okay? All right, let's do it. All right, so Edith. Bath or shower? Shower. Coffee or tea? Coffee. Downton Abbey or the Crown? Downton Abbey. Lemonade or iced tea? Um, it depends on whether it's sweet tea or not. It's up to you. Actually, no. Just mix them together. I'll have an Arnold Palmer. <laughs> okay. Game of Thrones or Big Brother? Uh, Game of Thrones. <laughs> Cook or carry out? Uh, it depends on how many hours I worked and how much driving I had to do with my middle schooler. Okay. Read a book or listen to it on Kindle. Uh, read. For me, it's usually read. Me too, but sometimes. And then the last one, romance or murder mystery. Romance. But especially if there's those intriguing ones that have a little murder mystery in them. I like okay. those. All right. Well, thank you, Edith. I like that. Well, I've got some happy mail. Let me share the happy mail. And then also, I want to remind everybody that um, the Morgie, and let me share the screen again to do that. But let me um, let you know that the Morgie is our featured apron this week. So for those of you that are on the show that watch the show, it is 10% off this week only. Next week, we'll have a different apron that's featured. And this one is Dogs Are Girls' Best Friend. There's our cute little puppy dogs. So if you're interested, um, be sure and check that out. Can I ask you a quick question about those aprons? Sure. Uh, so my best friend is a dog lover and her birthday's in September. Mm -hmm. If I order it, is it in stock now or does it have to get mit Okay. I Everything I have on this that I have up there is in stock right now. Now I've got a few that I just sold out like yesterday, but they're on order. But if you want the Morgie, I've got that right now. And yeah, I'm going to be buying that from you. So don't, I, you know, bring it to the library. Okay. <laughs> but, okay. And then, so here's the happy mail. And uh, one of them was an email that I got. Let me find it. And this one was um, in reference to my last video. And she says, hello, Denise. My name is Cindy. I recently found your channel and I've watched your videos, particularly those related to the Fly Lady cleaning system. In the past, I've watched a few others with the Fly Lady videos, and I have to say they left me confused, especially when it came to the zones. But after watching me explain the system, she felt things were a bit clearer. Now, she had a bunch of questions about it, which I'm going to respond to her questions by email. But I think I'm also going to make a video about it because I figure if she's confused, there's other people confused as well. I got a very nice little thank you card. And this is from, oh, this one, I don't know who it's from, but it's from Bear Delaware. And they just say, hello, Denise. I just wanted to send you a note of thanks. I found your channel in 2018 during a really tough time in my life. I was losing my mother and your channel saved my life. Oh, that is so sweet. You became my friend. I am so amazed and impressed by you. I have been married 31 years and your channel speaks to me. So on so many levels, keep it up. I will keep watching your content is so necessary. YouTube fan. And I've got a little sticker that just says you are loved. 
That is so nice. I don't get much mail. So when I do, I like to share it. And this is just so sweet. And then I got one from the Smiths. And look, isn't that cute? She says, thank you. And she won um, the Christmas. Oh, she won the Christmas apron from Christmas in July. And so she was just saying she was really excited to win it. And she's been wearing it already while she's making different things. So, so there's that. So that's my happy mail. So it was good to get that. And I believe... So your question of the day, ladies and gents, is what's your takeaway? Tell me your aha moment and how you plan to make using the library a regular occurrence in your life and how you plan to use the library to support your, your child. What can you do to use the library to support your child? Drop it in the chat. Let, let Edith know that she's been helpful to you. So how do you plan to use the library to support your child? So Epiphany said she enjoyed encyclopedia sets and coffee table books. I got a bunch of coffee table books. I don't have an encyclopedia set anymore. I gave away most of the pieces, but I did keep the annuals. But yeah, I miss some of that old fashioned stuff too. But um, what's your aha moment? Drop them in the chat so Edith will know. And then if you're on the replay, put it in the comment section. She might stop by and check it out later. Oh, um, this one is going to talk to uh, her librarian about asking about paying for a year so they can get access to services. Be sure to visit our sponsor, Apron Diva. The link is in the description box. And um, check out my last video on Zone 2 Clean. I want to say something just soul star belly dancer. Um, okay. you, you can't go in to do programs at your library, but you might be able to do virtual programs. Um, around the around the country. Um, I do a virtual program with two of the other librarians here in in our in our system. And um, it's called Crime Talk and we do true crime and we talk about podcasts and 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 crimes and things. Um, it's kind of fun. But we have a gentleman that comes regularly and he he zooms in from Pittsburgh because he um or somewhere in Pennsylvania because, because he and his wife are still staying home um, because their health is fragile. So they, he said they go to about 30 different um, zoom programs at libraries all around the country every month. Um, and so, and so you might, you might, I mean, not everybody can can do that, but clearly you have internet access because you're here with Denise, and you might be able to find um, some programs that'll work for you or your or or your family um, if you just look a little further afield um, and see what there is. If you have time to do some research, or email your email us. I I kind of feel like I should put my email in here, except that um, I asked about speaking on behalf of the library and the community engagement people told me no just go on as a friend of your <laughs> so so I'm not really doing this on work time but if you want to you know what I'm a librarian and if you ask me a question I will find the answer so if you want to um uh, Denise can you put it in there I don't seem to be able to type in the chat you can, you can put my you can put my email address in there ehelbert at acpl dot info is probably the easiest me, Halbert, Epiphany Prophet Adult Literacy is something libraries address. Yeah, that's perfect, Denise. Um, it is something that libraries address. We don't do as as much as we used to, but I feel like we're coming back around to it. One of the big things we do right now is um, more job readiness and job skills, soft skills type training. Um, we have we have um, librarians who work on who work in collaboration with our with our workforce development um, and and do programs on on how to do interviews or how to earn learn learn different skills. We also do a lot of um, things with with our local homeless populations. Um, I'm on a team right now that's working 
on how to help people who have been incarcerated who, who or who are currently incarcerated, but who are members of our community and how to um, how to better serve those those patrons of our library. So. Um, so Rachel says she's going to look up the library near her and see what they offer and might even go in with her two year old little son. OK, because, yeah, Rachel, libraries are it's good to start taking them when they're two. So they love it and enjoy it. And the books mm -hmm. become something that's just natural to them. So there's that. And um, let's see. Patricia said she has two pages of notes. She thought this was a super live chat. So thank you. And Linda says her our youngest was about two when she discovered the local library. Very enriching for the entire family. So. And Epiphany says she appreciates both of us. So Edith, I appreciate so much you coming on tonight, just sharing all your knowledge. I really do. Well, I'm really glad that you have such a such a great community. You've built this these these very nice women who and probably men who come in on. who come in and 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 are willing to make themselves vulnerable and ask these questions because sometimes we think everybody knows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody knows what a library is, <laughs> but we don't all know what the library has no. to offer. Yeah, so, and one like of the things I've been on about for a couple of years is people think the library is just about kids and books, and we're so much more than that. We really do try to cover the whole lifespan, um, and 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 it's not just books; it's information, it's mm -hmm. it's it's knowledge. Um, one of my favorite quotes. Um, it came from a, a study in the mid 2000s. I don't remember exactly what year it was. The Harwood Institute did this report on the American public libraries. And, and the quote that I love is an educated community, not higher circulation numbers is the goal. So I had that posted up on my, on my, above my desk for a long time. I took it down and put something else up because, but, but yeah, it's, it's, Okay. Yeah. Well, good. Well, Edith, I'm going to let you go. I know your child's right. probably tired of having to be hidden, but um, I'm going to wrap up. I'll say goodbye and then I'll come back to you. So don't leave. You can just okay. click off or I mean, like just stay. I'm going to click you off the screen. But yeah, so I'm going to click you off. Good, because I don't know how to do that. Okay, so wasn't she wonderful? I was just so happy to have her. And I hope you guys got some good out of that. So uh, Candace said that all the lives are helpful. I'm really glad that you're enjoying it, Candace. And you know, I'm sure there's some support for moms with new babies. And then um, uh, Michelle has a couple notes there for um, uh, Rachel as far as what to do with her, her little one as well. But so again, you guys, I'm going to wrap this up for you guys. I'll see you next time. Be sure and click on um, my... Um, latest video which was zone two cleaning and i've got more of that coming and michelle's going to be on in a couple of weeks so it'll be good to have her on as well be sure to visit our sponsor apron diva don't forget the morgue which you can see back there is 10 percent off tonight and i will see you guys next time and thanks for the super chat so much i appreciate it bye ladies and gents <laughs>